Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now in this video, I wanted to go over something that's been talked about and discussed ever since the original Jurassic Park came out way back in 1993. We're going to talk about the Tyrannosaurus breakout scene, specifically how this massive dinosaur managed to get out of its enclosure despite there being a giant drop-off shown visibly on screen just a few short minutes after it made its first appearance. Believe it or not, it's actually not that difficult to explain, but I will be the first to admit that the movie doesn't exactly do you any real favors while all of this stuff is going on. So with that being said, the first thing we need to look at is the film itself. Our first introduction to this part of the park comes with an ominous warning from game warden Robert Muldoon, who seriously stares off camera and states, Go ahead, all of you. We're approaching the Tyrannosaur paddock. This is the cue to show us the T-Rex pen on the big screen. Now, in this still image, you'll notice that there is a ton of foliage covering most of the bottom of the fence. As we pull up further, we get to see the little goat standing on solid ground looking out at the tour cars that have just stopped in front of it. But if you actually go back to the first image they show us of the paddock, you can see a visible dip in the perimeter fence that shoots down diagonally. That's going to be super important for understanding the breakout sequence that comes later. Now, once the Tyrannosaurus actually comes out to eat the goat, she grabs hold of the fence and realizes that the power isn't on. This prompts her to destroy the wires keeping her in and roar triumphantly out at the new land she has to navigate. But everyone wants to talk about the big problem with this scene, and that's the fact that when the T-Rex pushes Tim's car over the edge of the enclosure, he falls down several meters before crashing into the top of a tree. This massive drop-off can also be seen when Alan Grant grabs hold of the cables with his bare hands and begins to scale the concrete moat to get away from the dinosaur. Basically, the major question that people have with this scene is where the hell did that huge drop-off come from, and more importantly, how did the T-Rex even get out of its enclosure? if it had to get across all of that. Well, since there isn't too much more for us to really look at on the big screen, we're going to have to go back to the script. This is going to be the first of three stops in trying to fully understand what's going on here. And in that script, David Kep explains the Tyrannosaur breakout scene with the following. The T-Rex starts to nudge the explorer towards the barrier. Over the barrier, there's a gentle terraced area at one side where the Rex emerged from, but the car isn't next to that. It's next to a sharp precipice representing a 50 or 60 foot drop. If you'll recall a little scene that takes place earlier in the film, Donald Gennaro pesters John Hammond about the safety of Jurassic Park. He asks if the 50 miles of perimeter fence are in place before the billionaire assures him that they are. So are the motion sensors and most importantly, the concrete moats. This Tyrannosaur paddock actually represents one of those concrete moats with the script supporting this idea by saying that the Rex walked out from solid ground while right next to it was a sharp 50-foot drop. But we should really look at something a little more visual to fully represent what's going on here. Luckily for us, the people who made Jurassic Park actually made a map depicting the geography of this entire scene. What you're looking at is the actual drawings that were used by Phil Tippett during the production of Jurassic Park to try and perfect the main road breakout scene that was being created for the movie. Here we can see that the T-Rex has to walk up a large inclined hill in order to eat the goat. This is how the tour cars would have been able to see the dinosaur eat while on their little road trip through the park. In this map that they use during production, you can clearly see that the moat is labeled as such to the left of where the Rex breaks out. You can also see from this overhead angle that when the T-Rex flipped the car over and spun it around in the movie, it gets further away from where it was originally situated. When the T-Rex finally begins to push it into its enclosure, it's actually nudging it into the moat in order to drop it off of the cliff. Guess where we get to see this type of behavior happen again? Hang on to something! Hang on to something! So we've gone over the dip in the perimeter fence from the movie, the actual explanation spelled out in the script, and a visual diagram used by the people who actually made the film. But we're not done just yet. If there was any sort of doubt that the T-Rex had to walk up an inclined hill in order to eat the goat and break out from the fence away from the concrete moat, well then you should probably see this next image. This image comes from the NCANON website, the Dinosaur Protection Group. You can find the article in the report section titled, Investigation, The Old Park. Here we can see the visualization of the other side of the fence in broad daylight. In this picture, we see three brachiosaurs using the inclined hill to walk up and out of the enclosure the same way the T-Rex did in the actual movie. 
It should be noted that what's shown on this website is said to be hard, serious canon to the entire Jurassic Park series. So its inclusion and depiction of this area pretty much sums up just exactly what happened. And that's pretty much it. This is how the T-Rex got out of its paddock in Jurassic Park. Now I'm curious to hear from all of you what you think about this information. Do you think this area was designed well and would it have been safe if the park was ever open to the public? Something tells me that Rexy had been grabbing that fence waiting for the day it wasn't on for a little while. But hey, the park was never open so who knows if it would have ever worked. Either way, I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on this scene in the comments down below. Before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Daniel Benoit, it really means the world to me that all of you guys continue to support what I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you do to help. It honestly means the world. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I would appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. See you on the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.